the Brazilian embassy in Zagreb was concurrent with Vienna, where I was accredited between 1999 and 2002. And I had the occasion to present my credentials to President, then President Stepan Mezic, and had frequent interaction with Croatian authorities, including the creation of a honorary Brazilian consulate in Zagreb which was instrumental to increase relations between our countries, particularly in the areas of trade and tourism. I cherish the very pleasant moments of those years, especially when I used to drive, to drive from Vienna to Croatia for official business, and also to enjoy the beautiful scenery of the Adriatic coast and other parts of this charming country. National Pugwash groups play an important role in communicating the ideas behind the Pugwash movement to the public in general, and also to the scientific and community co communities. Meetings like this also generate fresh thoughts and fresh inputs and help to inform and mobilize public opinion about the challenges of our times. You know, as you know, the stimulus for the creation of Pugwash was a manifesto issued in 1955 by Bertrand Russell and Albert Einstein. The manifesto highlighted the dangers posed by German <clears throat> nuclear weapons to the survival of mankind and stressed the need for peaceful resolution of international conflicts and the end of all wars. In 1995, Pugwash and that president, Josef Rothblatt, were awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for their efforts to diminish the part played by nuclear arms in international po politics and in the longer run to eliminate such arms. In his acceptance speech, Dr. Rothblatt quoted a key phrase from the manifesto in the appeal to scientists of every country. He said, remember your humanity and forget the rest. And heeding that call is even more necessary today. Unfortunately, the existential danger posed by nuclear weapons still haunts mankind. Since the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962 and until recently, the world has never been confronted with the prospect of nuclear war. <clears throat> that belief has been shattered by the outbreak of the armed Russian aggression against Ukraine. Despite the joint declaration by the five nuclear weapon states recognized by the NPT that a nuclear war cannot be won and never be fought, threats of their use have been voiced in the context of that war. Regardless of its motivation, the war waged by Russia against Ukraine is unacceptable under international law. The Charter of the United Nations clearly establishes the obligation to resolve international disputes by peaceful means and to refrain from the threat or use of force against the territorial integrity of polit and pol or political independence of any state. The Security Council of the United Nations is specifically charged with the maintenance of peace and security, but has been unable to act because of the use of the power of veto. As a matter of fact, no action by the, council, by the Council against breaches of peace by any of its five permanent members is likely to prosper. These are the same five states that are recognized by the Treaty on the Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons as possessors of such weapons. And unfortunately, they seem to interpret the NPT as anointing them with the right to retain and continue developing their arsenals for as long as they see fit. Security, as the former Secretary General Ban Ki-moon once stated, is a public good of the highest order. By entrusting your own security to the possession of continu and continued <coughs> development of even more, more destructive means of warfare, nuclear weapon states deny security to the rest of the world and to the majority of the international community. Military expenditures in 2021 surpassed to $2 trillion, while resources for the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals continue to dwindle. The states that possess nuclear weapons do not seem willing to address seriously the possibility of their elimination. There are still too many unresolved differences, mistrust and disagreements between states, particularly the, the major nuclear weapon states. All nine possessors of nuclear weapons are currently increasing or enhancing their arsenals and developing new methods of conducting warfare, such as supersonic vehicles, cyber capabilities, artificial intelligence, swarms of drones and other kinds of offensive and defensive systems. Civil society must redouble its efforts to awaken the conscience of mankind to the challenges of the present age. 
I believe that the most important task <clears throat> before organizations such as Pogwash is to stress the danger posed by the, to the survival of the human race by the two greatest threats of our time, climate change and nuclear weapons. We are already behind in our fight to lessen the damage to the environment. And we have led nations to continue creating weapons of mass destruction. If we do not stop or hopefully reverse the deterioration of the environment, civilization as we know may disappear in a couple of decades. But if we do not eliminate nuclear weapons, civilization as we know may disappear in a few seconds. The construction of a new security paradigm not based on possession of weapons of mass destruction is urgently necessary. It must be non-discriminatory and inclusive in order to provide reliable security assurances to all and not just for a few. The necessary conditions for this are well known. A readiness to establish norms and principles of international law, respect for generally accepted standards of health interaction among nations and good faith compliance with commitments accepted in the past. In a word, responsible behavior. This is what we must urgently demand from the leaders of the main powers. 